Okay, before we get started, I'm just gonna go over the supplies uh, very quickly with you. Um, you really don't need a lot, but if you've not worked with watercolors before, I just want to um, walk you through some of these things, okay? Um, the first thing you are going to want to use is watercolor paper. Now, um, I recommended Canson XL 140-pound um, watercolor paper. This is my absolute favorite. It's my go-to. Um, it's not very expensive. You can get it at um, any of the major arts and crafts stores, um, especially the ones that offer 40% off coupons. So this is really good to use for this. Um, they also go on sale a lot. So this is the Canson XL. Um, watercolor paper does have two sides. So when you open up um, your pad or if you have, let me see here. <clears throat> I have um, another brand that I, that I like to use called Arteza. Um, this is also another brand that I like. This is a mixed media pad, um, but they come spiral bound as well um, as watercolor paper. Um, Arteza is also another really good brand. Um, it's a brand you can only get on the internet. So it is sold on Amazon or you can go to their website directly. Um, Strathmore is another brand that is reputable as well. Um, anyway. Uh, so with the watercolor paper, there are two sides, so when you open it up, the side you want to use is the side that's facing up. And between brands, you'll notice some differences between the texture, um, and there are things called, um, there are paper called hot press and cold press, and that just has to do with the way the paper is made. Um, generally, cold press will have a little more texture. Um, it's really just a matter of preference whether or not you like the texture, so just pick a paper. Pick a paper that you like. Um, Canson XL is my favorite, so that's what I recommend. Um, and then you need uh, some paint brushes. For watercolor, I mostly use round paint brushes, but you can really use anything um, that you like. Uh, I just have, this is a pack of um, Royal and Lang Nickel um, Menta paint brushes. I got these at Joann's. Um, they're not super expensive. Uh, Princeton is a fabulous brand of brush uh, for watercolor. Um, the only kind of brush you don't want to use is any brush marked for oil paint because that will be a very coarse brush. Um, and so the paint will uh, be, it won't do what you want it to do. Um, <clears throat> so go with, uh, for this lesson, some round brushes. Um, Basically, I encourage everybody who's doing watercolor just to have a thin, a medium, and a thick brush. Um, and then let's move on to watercolor. Um, there are so many different brands of watercolor, but I really encourage you, if you are interested at all in experimenting or learning about watercolor, to actually um, invest in a medium to high quality watercolor set because Crayola is just not going to cut it. Um, it doesn't behave like watercolor, it fades, it's not very bright. Um, so uh, if you want to learn about watercolor, actually invest in some watercolors. Um, a really good starter brand um, is a little set like this. This is called um, Prima, it's from Prima Marketing. Um, they also have a set called Prima Confections. They come in these um, little pans here. Um, and I like them. This set runs about $20. Um, again, you can find it in the large retail stores that have the 40% off coupons fairly regularly. Um, this is typically uh, mixed in with the mixed media supplies, so um, that's where you would find this, the Prima Marketing watercolors. Um, I like the way they behave for the price. Um, they're really good value, and um, I am using this evening uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolors, which are uh, my absolute favorite. Now, he's got a few different 
types of watercolor. Um, he has one called Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus. Uh, the Hydrus is going to be um, the brightest of all his watercolor sets. Um, oops, my camera does not, doesn't like it up close. Okay, Hydrus. Um, these are going to be the brightest, but they're not going to um, blend quite as well. They work a little bit more like an ink, but they're fabulous. I love them. Um, and then he's got a radiant uh, watercolor. That's my favorite. Um, I have not found those in any of the major stores. I've had to order them online. So um, that's that. And then this is called Synchro Synchromatic. It's just another option. Um, and then um, he has another student, student grade uh, type of watercolor. If it's Dr. P.H. Martin's, I love it. Um, however, he is fairly expensive. Um, he, I say he, the brand is fairly expensive. Um, I want to say it's a pack of 12 for maybe $70. Um, I do think you can find them online individually um, and get a few colors that way. Uh, but his watercolors are absolutely phenomenal. I love them. I love how they are. They're bright. They blend well. They move well. Um, they're absolutely my favorite. Another option that you can use is called uh, Brea Reese Watercolor Ink. Um, now this is, it's not exactly the same as watercolor, um, but it works the same. And um, these run about four, five dollars a bottle. Um, this brand I got at Hobby Lobby. I think they have them at Michaels as well. Um, they are not as bright as the Dr. P.H. Martins, but they uh, they work well, they layer well, um, and they're great to start with. Um, there also is a product out there called um, Acrylic Ink, which is a thinned out version of acrylic. Um, that will work, but it dries quickly and it doesn't lift and move quite the same, um, just so that you understand the difference. We're not using that in the lesson today, but if you run across it, it is um, a fun medium to, to work with, but it's a little bit different from watercolor, but it looks like watercolor. That's why I mention it. Um, another brand that I like, this is Fine Tech. And these are my metallic watercolors, again, which we're not using, um, but they come in these little half pans like this, and these are magnets, so they, oops, they go out and go back in. Um, but Fine Tech is another good brand that you can use. Okay, so we've got the watercolor. Um, I'm also going to be using um, some white acrylic paint this evening. I've just got Folk Art uh, white craft paint here. Um, and then we're gonna be using some salt. I got this, this is just a giant thing of salt that I got at the dollar store um, that I use for my watercolor. It's coarse, so it's larger crystals, but you can use table salt as well everybody probably has that. Um, you're going to need water, obviously, uh, paper towels to wipe off your brushes, and then uh, you're going to want to use some painter's tape. If you don't want to go out and get painter's tape, uh, you can use washi tape. It's a little um, thinner, so you'll have to make sure that you adhere it completely. Um, my favorite paint tape to use for watercolor is this purple, it's purple scotch um, delicate surface washi painters tape. Got this at Home Depot, they have it at Lowe's as well, it's just purple painters tape. You can use the blue painters tape as well. Um, you can use, really you can use masking tape and I'm not going to do this for this lesson but if you end up having to use um, masking tape or the blue painters tape, sometimes you can just put it on your clothes um, and get a little bit of the, the stick gone so that it doesn't peel up your paper. That's why we use washi tape is so it doesn't rip up our paper. Anyway, so those are the supplies. Um, it sounds like a lot, but basically you need watercolor and water, white acrylic paint, 
and watercolor paper um, and paint brushes. So gather up that stuff and let's get started. Okay, now that we've talked about supplies, we can go ahead and get started on our lesson. Um, the first thing that you wanna do is get your painter's tape and we are gonna create a shape on our pad and I'm just gonna make a rectangle. Um, you can make any shape you would like, a diamond, a triangle, square. The key to the shape is just making sure that um, your lines are nice and straight. So. So here is my rectangle, and I'm just going to go over the edges of the tape, making sure that it's all sealed down. And the first thing that we're going to do is get a wet paintbrush with just clean water, and we're just going to wet the inside of your shape. So I'm going to wet the inside of my rectangle here. That gets my paper nice and moist so that when I add the watercolor, it's going to move around on its own. This technique is called wet on wet. And uh, it does dry little by little as I talk. So I've just got mine nice and wet here. Um, I've got my watercolors on my palette here. So I've got a purple, a blue, and a magenta. You can choose any colors you would like for your sky. These are the ones I'm going to use to show you how it works. And basically what we're gonna do is just get some color on our brush and apply it. And it's gonna move and interact on its own as we continue to add color. So you can put it on here however you want the colors in your sky to go. I'm going to go at a diagonal here. Uh, and use whichever colors you like in whichever order you like and just add them on there until your background is completely covered. Make sure that uh, you mix You've got a lot of water mixed in so that there's movement. And once you've got a nice pattern of color on here, want to get it mostly colored uh, then we're going to add in some more water um, so what I'm going to do is just continue to add color until most of the white is gone you can overlap some of the colors you can blend some of the colors but I'm just adding by tapping so I put a little blue over some of the other colors I'm going to come back in and maybe do the same thing with the purple I've just got some different shapes, some different patterns. I'm going to rinse out my brush and then I'm just going to apply some water, some dots of water. Now you can't see my water because my water is clear, but what's going to happen as I add this water in is it's going to move and push some of this color around. It's going to blend, it's going to bleed, uh, it's going to misbehave, and it's going to do its own thing. Okay. So as you can see here, it's starting to move and blend. And the last thing I'm gonna do um, before I add my salt is just add a little bit of blackness 
around some of the edges and that just gives it kind of that vignette look. You don't need to be very heavy with your black at all uh, because the pigment is pretty strong. Um, so I'm just going to tap here along some of the edges and it's, I'm not even um, really putting a lot inside the rectangle, I'm letting it bleed off of that tape. And the next thing we're going to do, I've got salt. This is just salt I got from the dollar store. It's big and chunky. You can use table salt. And then I'm just going to get a little pinch in my fingers and then drop it onto my wet watercolor. I don't need a ton. I just want kind of a pinch here. Now I'm going to let this dry. And the salt is going to... Um, react with the watercolor, what it does is because salt is absorbent, uh, it sucks in the water and it causes uh, the watercolor to move um, and splotch a little bit. So uh, I'm going to pause my video here. I'm going to let this dry completely. We need it dry before we move on to the next step. And then I'm going to return and show you what it looks like in a close up. Okay, it's been about five minutes and um, my piece is dry here. So what I'm going to do is just um, scrape the salt off. So it kind of sticks on there a little bit. Oops. And then um, lift this up. As you can see, the salt has just kind of made some visual interest here on my sky. And I love the way that looks. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is grab some uh, white acrylic paint here. And uh, you don't need very much, but we're just going to create some stars in the sky. And this part is fun. It's a little messy, but it's fun. Uh, so you just want to get water, nice wet paintbrush, and I'm actually just going to use what I've got here in the cap because you don't need a whole lot. And I'm going to water down some of this acrylic paint so that it's nice and thin. And the reason I use acrylic um, and not watercolor is because uh, for this the watercolor uh, will tend to um, seep into the paper and you won't see it as bright. Okay, so I've got nice watery white acrylic paint on my brush. I'm just going to hold it over my piece and I'm going to tap. And this is going to put some stars on there. And you can put as much or as little as you would like. And if you decide that you want to add uh, maybe some larger stars. You can go in with a thin brush and just kind of add in some dots, some larger stars. Maybe you want uh, a little comet or something. Woo! You can draw that in. fun step and you can just use your creativity to make that part your own. Great, so I've got some stars. Now the next thing I want to do is add in some trees. So for this we're going to use round brush my white out of it. So a nice clean round brush. We're going to use the black paint. So get some black paint on your brush. 
tap it off. You don't want it to be too incredibly wet. And we're gonna make some trees. Uh, now I want my trees to be higher on the edges and go smaller on the inside. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of make my layout here. Okay, so I'm just drawing lines. And I, I want it to be even, but not perfectly symmetrical. So, um, let me just draw in the old forest here. By adding in the lines, it just helps you know where to dot in your trees. Okay. And next we're going to start, um, these trees are abstract, I'm not worried about perfection, so I'm just going to start dotting these trees, working my way wider as I get down. Now in this tree, uh, there's not full coverage, I can see a little bit of the background in there, that's okay. I'm just going for the shape. Thin at the top, wider at the bottom, and I'm just tap, tap, tapping. It's not a specific formula here. This is very loosey-goosey, very sketchy, sketch-like. That is it. That is uh, the first example here of the watercolor sky. Now again, we want our paint to dry before we peel up our tape. So uh, let it sit for about five minutes and then I'm going to show you a quick um, friendly to the paper way or friendly way to not rip your paper when you take off the tape. So I'll uh, see you in just a few minutes. My painting here is pretty dry and so now what we need to do is peel off the tape. Uh, the best way to peel off your tape, uh, first you need to see which pieces are on top, um, but you always want to peel away from your painting very slowly. Peel away from the painting. Pull up the corner and peel away from your work. still have a lot of that uh, pattern in there from the salt. You can see the stars really well. And this is a really fun, easy way to learn how watercolors behave. Uh, now I'm going to show you another example using the same techniques 
and um, just a different shape. So these are really uh, fun and easy to do. So this time I'm going to turn my canvas on kind of a um, portrait setting, not setting, but a portrait view here. Vertical, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, let me go ahead and peel this off. So it looks a little bit better. All right. And for this, um, what I'm going to do is just find the middle of my paper, and I'm just going to mark that, and that's going to help me make my my diamond. So uh, this piece of paper is nine, nine, 11, nine by eleven, maybe nine by twelve. Um, Mark the middle at the top and the middle at the bottom. Yeah, 9 by 12. And I'm going to make a diamond shape this time. of the tape with my little marks here. That way we are going, we've got a nice even diamond shape here. Oops. Get this way. We'll tape it onto your paper or tape it onto your table. Oops. Make sure you're lining up the inside of the tape line with your marks, not the outside. and then wet the inside of your diamonds. We're just going to go through the same steps again. I'm just going to show you how you can kind of make a different look. All right, so get it nice and wet. Now I'm using a little more of my paper here. So I'm going to use my larger brush, okay? More blue. All right. So again, we're just going to apply some color in here. I think I'm going to kind of go I'm just tapping natural. I definitely don't want it to look specific and um, even because the sky is never that way. Colors are never like that. and drips. Totally okay with that. That just makes it more interesting. I'm going to go in here with the pink, the magenta. Well, I'm 
using the same technique I did before, uh, just in a different way. So you really just want to apply your color. Now this time, I'm going to show you, I'm going to get a little bit of this magenta on my paintbrush and I'm going to splat it just like I did with the water in the last piece. So you can do that with color, not just water as well. So don't be afraid to be creative and try new things with your paint. It's just paper, you're not going to mess anything up. So I've got some splatter in there. Um, I'm going to add some water splatter as well. And then just a pinch of salt. Now you can see my paper is buckling just a little bit and it's causing some of this watercolor to pool. For an activity like this, for a, a painting, a piece like this, I'm okay with that. That's totally fine with me because I want it to be random and unique. So I'm adding a little bit of my salt on there. And now we wait for this to dry. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll meet you back here in about five minutes. All right, guys, I think that my salt is dry, my watercolor is dry. And so again, what I'm gonna do is just scrape it off. I'm using uh, just a, a card, you can use a credit card, you can use a ruler, um, you can use the edge of a piece of paper. It's just um, a way to get it off. You can use your fingernail. All right, so the salt is off and the next step was uh, using some acrylic paint to make stars. So again, I'm just gonna get some of this white paint here, add some water, and then tap it to make some stars. You can put as many or as few as you would like. I'm going to rinse out my brush because uh, I'm going to need that for trees. I'm going to set this aside for just a minute and let this white paint dry. And while I do that, I am going to show you um, how I make my trees so that there is um, no confusion and really just kind of easy peasy. Okay, um, I'm real sketchy with how I make my trees. So if I was just a pen here. If I was going to make my trees with pen, um, so I told you we start with a line, right? So you've got your, oops, that one's not even straight. So you've got a line, and then uh, I just kind of, I'm kind of real sketchy with the shape. And that's it. It's, it's so easy to make an abstract tree. Now I'm going to show you the same thing with, let me get my round paintbrush here, uh, with the watercolor paint, okay? So let's say I have my tree line, and you don't have to make the lines first, that just helps me visually know where I'm going to put it. I just start at the top and I tap and smudge, tap and smudge. It. It's super easy. It's not realistic. You just want to give the essence of a tree. So you can even make one kind of tall 
and then just all up to your preference. These are your trees, okay? So that's how I make the trees. So on this diamond here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna make some trees. So um, I'm gonna try it without making the lines just to show you that it's, it's not difficult. Um, What I'm going to do is the same thing as I did before. Visually, I just kind of want it on the sides down through the middle. So um, I tap to start and then just kind of make your tree. And once you get the general shape, you can go back and fill it in as you need to. There is no Rules. You make your piece however you would like it. So maybe I want a little tree over here, here, until I get a nice skyline here. I'm using watercolor for these trees. You could also use acrylic paint for the trees if you like. I like the look of the, the watercolor. I do when I'm done sometimes is I'll just kind of go back over those edges and darken those in a little bit. Anywhere you need to, you can add more black if there's anything you need to cover. But that's it. We just let this dry and then we pull up our tape and we've got this cool little seam here. down there that doesn't want to cover with the black. Sometimes that happens if I put salt or too much salt, but I like it. I like that it's unique. So again, we let this dry. I think this is actually dry enough that I can pull it up. We pull our, oops, this one's pulled just a little bit. Pull our tape away from our piece. Nice, clean edges. 
edges. Bring this in a little bit closer so you can see some of that detail. So this is a lot of fun. Um, this is a great way to start playing with watercolor, seeing some of the properties that it has, um, and just getting a good feel for it. So this was my first piece, or sorry, my second piece, um, compared to my first. So you can do a lot um, just by changing the shapes and the way you make the trees um, where you put the tree. So I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I would love, love, love to see how it turns out. So um, if you decide to post it, I would love for you to tag um, at Painted Cicada on Twitter or Instagram. Um, or you can share uh, on Facebook if you tag the Painted Cicada. So uh, I'm so glad you joined me. I appreciate you guys uh, making art and I can't wait to see what you created.